This is Donald Knuth. Professor. Author. Math savant. Pipe organist. And this is Donald Knuth's life's work. The art of computer programming. Clocking in at well over 3,000 pages. It's considered by many to be a founding text of computer science. Bill Gates once said, if you can read the whole thing, send me a resume. But in 1964, when Knuth was still in the middle of writing volume one, there was no guarantee his opus would ever see the light of day. That's because the same perfectionist streak that drove Knuth to analyze his college basketball team and optimize his home's kitchen around the trash can was getting in the way of actually publishing anything. Checking and rechecking every page, Knuth blew through deadline after deadline. His editor demanded progress. His family missed him. And still, volume one remained unfinished. Finally, he arrived at a solution. If he could not make his book perfect, he would make it perfectible. And so, on page 12 of the preface, he added a short note. I will greatly appreciate receiving information about any errors noticed by the readers, so that they may be corrected as soon as possible in future editions. It worked. As soon as the book hit shelves, error reports started coming in. Mathematicians corrected flawed equations. Nitpickers pointed out punctuation errors. With each find, Knuth mails out a reward of 256 cents. That's one zero zero in a hexadecimal, in case you didn't know. So far, Knuth's cut more than $22,000 worth of checks. They've even become a bit of a collector's item. More get framed than cashed. And with each new edition of his book, fewer and fewer errors remain. Flash forward to today, and the software engineers responsible for the apps and services billions of people rely on face a conundrum similar to Knuth's. How do you make your code perfect without delaying progress indefinitely? You follow in Knuth's footsteps and start rewarding the people that hunt down your mistakes. When it's your job to keep billions of people safe online, you have to live and breathe and see the internet just like the attackers do. Because the only way to stop a hacker is to think like one. This is Eduardo Vela, security engineering lead at Google. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Eduardo doesn't have a Knuth check, but he has found thousands of errors in all kinds of software, including Google's. Does Google have bugs? Sure, Google has bugs. Google has vulnerabilities. Everything that we do in everyday life that relates to software, we are putting some trust on whoever wrote that code. We, as Googlers, we recognize the responsibility of the faith that people place in Google. We have a team of people that we look at the code, that we look at the product, and we look for bugs. But then, inevitably, there is going to be something that we didn't know about. Coming up with new ways to keep bugs out of Google's code is a full-time job, one that's held by Christoph Kern principal engineer on Google's Security Foundations team. He knows more about bugs than just about anyone. There's basically two kinds of bugs. There's functional bugs where the program just doesn't work correctly, like some UI element, you click on the button, nothing happens, that kind of thing. And then there's security bugs where the program doesn't work correctly, but it has a security implication where, for instance, somebody else might be able to get data that they're not supposed to have. 
he's talking about bugs like... Memory corruption vulnerabilities, buffer overflows, injection bugs, cross-site script injection, SQL injection, predictable identifiers, various authorization vulnerabilities. I don't know. Let's leave it at that, maybe. <laughs> Fair enough. But if we already know about all these bugs, why do they keep popping up? One particular challenge with software that's being delivered over the internet is that it's so malleable, right? Many web-facing applications basically get delivered a new version every couple of weeks or even every week. So the software is constantly changing. Every time there is a change, there is a possibility of introducing a subtle flaw that could potentially have security implications. So change causes bugs, and code is always changing. Faced with this problem, there are two approaches companies can take. Hope no one finds their bugs and threaten to prosecute those who do. Or think like Knuth and ask the community for help. So there are a lot of people who, for the intellectual stimulation of it all, tend to search for vulnerabilities and systems. When you think back to this community of hackers, one of the things that they loved doing was finding something that no one else has found before. I think it just comes from an innate sense of curiosity, wanting to figure out how things work. Literal translation of hacker in Spanish is pirata informatico, which means information pirate. I think it represents better what we do when we talk about bug hunting or vulnerability researchers. You are looking for clues, you're looking for hints, and you're trying to chase weird behavior into something that is like a bug or a vulnerability. That's why it's called bug hunting. And yeah, it's, it's like hunting <laughs> for bugs. We have this program called the Google Bug Hunters program in which we ask people in the world that are able to find security issues to tell us about it. Across more than 100 countries, thousands of amateur and professional hackers alike have answered the call, filing thousands of bug reports every year. Over time, a few of these hunters have risen to the top, the best of the best. Bug hunters are from all around the world. They come from as many countries as you can imagine. Sometimes it's very difficult to ship them gifts, and that's usually how we found out where exactly they are from. There is one guy named Callum. He's from the United Kingdom. I hack companies in my free time. <laughs> it's the easiest way to, to say it. <laughs> There's Yesenia from Mexico. Bug hunting is an addiction for me. It's de lunes a viernes, 24-7. We have Joao Luca Melo Brazio. He used the money that we gave him for rewards to build companies. Now he has many companies. <laughs> he has houses and shit. Uh, sorry. <laughs> he has houses and stuff. Look at the top of the leaderboard, and you'll find Tomasz Bojarski, the number one ranked bug hunter in the world. I'm number one since 2016, and I'm not really putting any effort into keeping number one. I don't know why people are so lazy, I guess. <laughs> but hot on Tomasz's heels is a new generation of hackers, one that entered the hunt before they could even drive. Meet Ezekiel Pereira, hacker since homeroom. When I was in high school, I decided to try to find like vulnerabilities in the high school website, bringing the site down, or editing some page to say, oh, there are no classes or something like that. Then I got caught. They suspended me for a month and made me clean the high school until the end of the school year. And that was not fun at all. That was not fun at all. Youthful hijinks aside, it didn't take long for Ezekiel to start putting his skills to good use. In 2018, I reported a security vulnerability in Google Cloud. Suddenly, I get an email. Congratulations. Thank you for reporting this vulnerability to us. I called my mother. Hello, by the way, Google told me that a vulnerability that I had reported, they would be rewarding me with $10,000. <laughs> Suddenly she screamed. <laughs> and I had to put away the phone. <laughs> Authorities are still deciding whether to file charges against Google for the hackers. As long as there's been an internet, there have been people like Ezekiel. But there hasn't always been a way for their skills to be rewarded. At least, not ethically. Early resistance to the idea of paying for bugs drove hackers to the darker corners of the web, where bug brokers that operate outside the law welcomed them, 
and their discoveries with open arms. It's a problem that still exists today. Um, these days you can go to websites, you can look it up and see what the price of a certain exploit is, and also if you're a security researcher, you can submit that exploit into what's basically known as the grey market, where you would sell that vulnerability to a bug broker who would then go sell it to unspecified clients, usually at a, a much higher price. And the clients we're talking about here, nation states or people with very deep pockets. Why would they be buying something like that? Almost certainly to use to exploit users. In the early days of bug hunter programs, rewards were given out just a few times a year from a limited prize pool. To counter the growing appetite of the black market and to find more of the errors hiding in Google's code, Tim and Eduardo had to change tactics and increase the stakes considerably. We thought, wouldn't it be cool if we said we'd pay infinity million dollars for bugs? We spoke about it and we're like, well, why not? Like, would there be a case where we would not pay for that type of bug? No, okay. Then aren't we basically saying there's infinity million dollars on the table? Since moving to an unlimited war chest, bug finds have gone parabolic with new records being set every year. But it's not just about financial incentives. Here's Katie Masouris, CEO of Luda Security. She's an expert in what makes bug hunters tick. Having a steady stream of high quality security researchers, that takes a whole bunch more community building. And that is something that, you know, I think Google really excels in. They have their own very highly skilled security researchers interacting with their counterparts on the outside of Google all the time. That starts with a handwritten thank you note, or at least a handwritten email. The, the engineer who is taking the bug, he actually writes a message to himself and says, nice catch, nice catch, nice catch, nice catch. <laughs> they always send you that. The classic Google line, the nice catch, yeah. They've added an emoji now. <laughs> Lo que más me ha sorprendido, te llegan a responder incluso al día siguiente. And sometimes when you receive a, whoa, very nice catch, oh my God, you are a superhero. It's, it's nice. And I love that because it's, it's individual thing to you, right, for the bug. And that sort of direct engineer to engineer interaction is one of the most powerful ways to attract outsiders way more than money. The respect Google engineers have for the hunters is about more than technical prowess. It's about gratitude. Because the bugs they find aren't just stamped out, they're also studied. The best hackers in the world are ones who continually learn from other hackers. We are exchanging ideas, learning new techniques, and expanding upon each other's knowledge. Bugs reported today will be used to strengthen the preventative measures of tomorrow allowing the code of the future to start out a little closer to error-free. Sometimes you see a report from a bug hunter where somebody found a really subtle problem that actually kind of betrays a fairly detailed understanding of how the application works. You kind of wonder, how did they figure this out, right? And you go like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. And then, you know, quite a few of those bug hunters end up getting hired <laughs> because <laughs> they, they sort of emerge as somebody who really has a particular knack for this kind of work. Yep, sometimes the error finders end up as system designers. <laughs> it's a journey Knuth might appreciate. Today, engraved in the entryway of his home are the words of Danish poet Pete Hein. The road to wisdom? Well, it's plain and simple to express. Air and air and air again. But less and less. And less. A fine message for the next generation of software engineers and the bug hunters that will bring their code a little closer to perfection. Eduardo, we are all good. Thank you so awesome. much. Awesome. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> all right. Goodbye. Have a nice day. <laughs>
pack everything. The weakest point for Google might be a non-Google product. The implant allowed them to pull chat history, photos, GPS locations. Within 30 minutes, the seven of you could make the internet unusable for the entire nation. The company doesn't fix the bug in 90 days. We put it all online.